वेलकम टू केमिस्ट्री क्लास वी आर इन सेशन वन ऑफ द चैप्टर जनरल ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री एंड दिस द चैप्टर वेयर वी डिस्कस ऑल द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट विच वी कम अक्रॉस थ्रू आउट द एंटायर ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री सो इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल नेवर डिस्कस अबाउट द इंडिविजुअल प्रिपरेशन एंड प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड बट वी डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस रिएक्शन मेकानिजम वी कम अक्रॉस इन दिस ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री and we shall also discuss about the isomerism in organic compounds and the nomenclature of the organic compounds so overall this chapter is the basic concepts of organic chemistry in this session let us discuss about some of the basic concepts of this general organic chemistry in particular we shall discuss about the definition or the meaning of organic chemistry we shall discuss about the bonding in organic compounds then regarding the structural representation of the organic compounds in the last one related to the classification of the organic compounds these are the topics which shall be discussed in this session first let's understand the meaning of organic chemistry basically the word organic means life therefore all substances which were obtained directly or indirectly from the living organisms we call them as organic compounds and the branch of chemistry which deals with these compounds that was called as organic chemistry so other than this all the other substances which were not obtained from the living organisms they were called as inorganic compounds and definitely the branch of chemistry which deals with these inorganic compounds it was called as inorganic chemistry so this was the definition proposed long long back after that scientist named berzelius he proposed vital force theory and according to this particular theory there is a driving force which is called as the vital force which is responsible for the production of the organic compound by the living organisms but this vital force theory was proved to be wrong by scientist named holer by synthesizing the first organic compound that is urea in the lab by using some non living substances that is when ammonium cyanate is heated that resulted in the formation of urea so this is the formula of urea nh2co nh2 which was obtained for the first time in the lab by the heating of ammonium cyanate and this ammonium cyanate in turn obtained by the reaction between ammonium chloride with potassium cyanate so here we get ammonium cyanate and kcl so as the first organic compound that is urea was prepared from the non living substances that is the reason why is vital force theory was disproved was proved to be wrong later on another scientist named kolbe he synthesized acetic acid from its elements then berthelot he synthesized methane and after that this berzelius vital force theory was completely disproved because so many organic substances were prepared in the lab but according to vital force theory only the living organisms have a driving force which is called as a vital force from where we can get the organic compounds but that was proved wrong by all these scientists now let's see the modern definition of organic chemistry as carbon is the essential constituents of all organic compounds organic chemistry is defined as the chemistry of carbon compounds as carbon is the main constituent of all organic compounds organic chemistry was defined as the chemistry of carbon compounds but there are some compounds of carbon such as carbon dioxide carbon monoxide all metal carbonates and metal bicarbonates like sodium carbonate magnesium carbonate calcium carbonate sodium bicarbonate then metal carbides etc all these compounds were studied under the inorganic chemistry so even though they contain carbon they are not considered as organic compounds so definitely this becomes the exception for the definition of organic chemistry and later on they found that the simplest organic compounds found to contain carbon as well as hydrogen and those compounds were named as hydrocarbons so what are hydrocarbons these are the compounds of carbon and hydrogen and all other compounds may be regarded as the derivatives of these hydrocarbons so what is the meaning of derivatives of hydrocarbons those are the compounds which can be obtained by replacing one or more number of hydrogens 
with the different atoms or different groups. For example, when we take methane, when one of the hydrogen of methane is replaced by OH group, we get an alcohol. So this can be treated as the derivative of methane. Again, acetic acid is a derivative of methane because one of the hydrogen is replaced by acid group. So now we can define organic chemistry as like this. It is the chemistry of hydrocarbons and their derivatives. Means the study of hydrocarbons means it includes the preparations, chemical reactions, the physical properties and their structural behavior, everything along with their derivatives. That comes under the heading of organic chemistry. So now what is the exact definition of organic chemistry? It is defined as the branch of chemistry which deals with the study of hydrocarbons and their derivatives. So why organic compounds are studied separately? What is the reason here? We know that all these organic compounds basically contain carbon. So carbon itself is the reason why organic compounds are studied separately. Because carbon has some special properties. One, catenation. What is the meaning of catenation? Catenation is nothing but the tendency of an element to form chains or rings of identical atoms. Means self-linkage of identical atoms to form long chains or rings that is called as the catenation. Among all the known elements, the catenation property is maximum for carbon. So why the catenation property is maximum for carbon? That is because of its high bond energy. So because of its high bond energy, the catenation property is maximum for carbon. That is the reason why self-linkage of carbon atoms takes place in order to form long chains or rings. And this self-linkage is achieved by combining with other carbon atoms either by a single bond or a double bond or sometimes even with a triple covalent bond also. As we know that carbon is a tetravalent. So at any cost in each and every compound it forms four bonds. It can be four single bonds or one double bond and two single bonds or a triple bond and a single bond or two double bonds. In any of the manner it can combine to form long chains or rings. And the second reason is this carbon has the tendency to combine with so many other non-metals. Means it has the ability to form strong covalent bonds with many of the non-metals such as hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, halogens, etc. And another major reason is isomerism. So regarding isomerism, you will learn separately after 4 or 5 sessions. There is a very big topic as this is a one of the major characteristic property of organic compounds. So isomerism means some of the organic compounds can exist in more than one different form. The isomerism, this is a phenomenon which arises due to the difference in the arrangement of atoms in the molecule. So because of the difference in the arrangement of atoms in the molecule, we get different structural compounds. So that is the reason why the same compound can exist in different ways. Anyhow, let's discuss about the isomerism as a separate topic. So these are the three main reasons why organic compounds are studied separately. One is the catenation. Second one, tendency to combine with other non-metals. The third one is the isomerism.